All right, guys, this is just a video that's been left around. It was in the group for a long time. I didn't know if to upload it or not. Um, just being sat there gathering dust. Personally, I don't like it, and I think you may like it more than I do. So, um, enjoy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and anybody in between. Can't say ladies and gentlemen nowadays without offending somebody, can you? So, everybody, ladies, gentlemen, anybody with or anybody without, and anybody with a bit of both, you're all welcome here. Thank you very much for joining, and welcome back to the second video in round two of my videos titled The Essex Boys Case. Today I'm going to be looking at a little idea that's been going around in my mind for a while and it's regarding something that Billy Blundell said in an interview. This is the interview that I'm talking about and this is just the little snippets that I'm going to be going over so you know. Happy. Well, I went to the club there where you was to look for him. That's right. Because, uh, you know, there was a bit of a conflict and I needed to, to uh, talk to him, you know. And uh, for some reason... Uh, Tucker, was it Tucker? Tucker wouldn't wouldn't come and meet me. Tate, Tate's the big guy, ain't he? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so he saw that with 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 uh, Pat Tate to come see me, and he come down the farm and and I told him what the score was and what was going down and now, you know, they're upsetting wrong people, and uh, they're not prepared to come and talk about it. And I said, you do realise you're you're with him all the time, ain't you? So and if anything goes down, you're going to get it as well as him. Someone creeps up behind you, go bang in the back of the head. Don't be surprised because, you know, he said, "Well, he looked me in the eye and he said, well, if it happens, it happens." So then I knew it was no, it was no good trying to talk to him or the other one. And then there's this one that I'm going to be dissecting. In Essex, he knew you could help him. I said to him, "Yeah, it can be sorted out." I said, "I'll make a phone call now and get it sorted out for you." I made a phone call, and a guy turned up on a motorbike with a crash helmet with a 9mm gun. Blundell provided the terrified dealer with the gun, the chaperone and some simple advice. I want to turn up, shoot one of them straight in the cobblers. You ain't gonna kill him, just shoot him straight in the cobblers. Or even both of them. The dealer declined this helpful offer. Instead, Blundell called the Essex boys to a meeting. Only Tate turned up and Blundell took the chance to warn him that his association with Tucker was dangerous. He didn't seem to uh, care much, and I said to him, you know, we saw him keep blanking and all that, but what happens if someone creeps up behind him and goes bang in the back of the head? If you're with him, you're going to get it as well. He looked at me and I said, well, if it happens, it happens. Three days later, it happened. They were found in right, so these are two pretty common interviews that we know of Billy Blundell. Billy Blundell and Eddie Blundell in the first one. And then there's just the floating head interview with Billy himself. And you heard for yourself that he's talking about how he tried to talk to Pat Tate and he tried to get in touch with Tucker. Tucker didn't want to come and see him. So, so Pat Tate went to see him and there was nothing that could be done. Um, and in the second one, you hear him saying, okay, look, um, a family member, and I think it's it's Mark Murray, his name was, he was the dealer for Rakows, he was related to Billy, and he was in trouble because he owed Pat and Tucker money, and because of the police presence around the Leah Betts saga, he obviously couldn't, deal and he couldn't pay them their money so tony and pat started threatening him he's related to the blundells and billy blundell now goes after pat to try and talk to them now this is in billy's words obviously he says there doesn't he, he says that um he, he was on the phone there was a bit of trouble between tony and pat so so billy turns more or less straight away to get a hitman and shoot him and you heard yourself look you're not going to kill him you're just going to shoot him in the cobblers now what interests me about this and look i i i'm i don't know how to explain this look i'm not calling billy blunder a liar i'm not suggesting here that he is lying here what i will say though is look if billy blunder was involved in those murders right i.e 
if he was involved with ordering it or whether he was involved in carrying it out himself. I, I'm never going to know that. When I doubt we're ever going to know that. But look, if he was involved, he's not going to want to tell anybody. But because of the interest that's surrounding this story and him as the figure that he was in that criminal's fraternity, which, and it's his own career, isn't it? He is a somebody in that world he understands business and he understands that the Essex boys story is big business he can contribute to any story and there's no doubt that he's probably getting paid for this for any interview that he does but he's not gonna want to tell you the absolute truth is he now if he was involved as I say ie ordering it or doing it himself He's never going to want to tell you the truth. So, as it's been so long, it's more or less fairly straight that he's got away with it. Yeah? And he's still not going to want to tell you the truth if he was involved or not. But he will contribute to the story and he'll make it a little bit more exciting. And he'll try and tell you bits and bobs that he can, A, remember, and little bits that he can contribute that doesn't incriminate himself. I'm not calling him a liar, I'm just saying that if, if he was involved, he's not going to want to tell you the truth. He's not going to want to say, he's not going to say, is he? Okay, yeah, then I ordered this, I ordered that, and then we, we, we all stood in the field and watched him get shot and shit like that, you know what I mean? He's not going to say that. So this is Billy Blundell telling you what he wants you to know regarding this all these years later without incriminating himself and without incriminating his brother if again that word if he was involved in the first place let's just get that straight okay so here he says look that he went to see pat tate tony tucker tony didn't want to talk to him if you listen again here he says i invited them to the farm with uh, pat tate to come see me and he come down the farm and, and I told him what the score was and what was going down and now, you know, they're upsetting wrong people to come see me. And he come down the farm and... Okay, so with it in mind that this could be Billy Blundell, just bending the truth a little bit so you don't, that A, he doesn't incriminate himself and B, you don't guess what he's on about here, right? He's there talking about a farm and a meeting with Tony and Pat. Now, don't you find it a little bit funny that Tony, Pat and Craig were found on a farm? White House Farm, the lane right next to, next door to the farm. Billy Blundell's there talking about inviting them to a farm and Tony, Pat and Craig were found killed dead at a farm. Also, I probably think, you know, this is probably way out there, but did you hear in his voice there when he says, he mentions the word farm there, and then there's a, quite a long pause after that, you know, you probably don't notice that when you watch it in the interview, but there is quite a long pause after he says the word farm. That could mean anything, but, you know, it could mean that he's just literally dropped himself in it a little bit there. You know, he said, you know, so I invited him down to the farm, which it's you know that that could mean that he's just he's remembered that he could actually be dropping himself in there listen down the farm and can I down the farm and can I down the farm and can I that's probably nothing but you know for the nature of the video I think that is quite interesting if there are any body language experts out there that know all about dialect and you know if somebody's lying or trying to get away with something you know what are their what are their natural actions when they're doing it i know looking down or looking away is classed as proof that they're lying but you know in this instance you know if billy is actually trying to divert you away from the truth and he's you know literally it's popped in his mind oops should have said that you know i invite him down to the farm and i um, you know it's like oops have i just uh, have i just said too much there i am probably going on a bit wrong then you know that's probably a little bit 
too much that is but you know I don't care so that's my first point my second point is in the second interview and it's saying that he's basically arranging for them to get shot he calls somebody up he arrives on a motorbike with a crash helmet nine millimeter gun he's not going to kill him he's just going to shoot him in the ball bag but then if you hear him he says that um well the the, narr the narrator says that he says uh, the dealer declined and instead billy invited them to a meeting the dealer declined this helpful offer instead blundell called the essex boys to a meeting Right, I am being a little bit forward in my suggestions here, but this is the way I'm hearing this. Billy Blundell has arranged for a hitman to shoot Pat Tate in the balls. The hitman has said no, he's declined. Instead, Billy said, I'll go and meet them. Could this be Billy Blundell telling us that he went to meet them at the farm? Right. He arranged a meeting with Pat and Tucker to go to the farm. Tony, Pat and Cray arrived at the farm. Billy went and met them. Billy said some of those words. Look, you, you're messing around with the wrong people. Stop fucking about. It could explain why Tucker has got mud on his shoes. Because they got to that lane, they had to wait for Billy to arrive. This is the meeting, this is the summon, this is the meeting that Billy's arranged. They all go. They all get to that gate. They're all saying fucking, it's out the way, but this is where Billy has suggested we come. Billy may even bribe them a little by saying, look, we know the, we know what's happening. Look what's happening in town. Leabet shit. Fucking these pill dealers. We're all involved here. Let's go somewhere quiet. I've got a bit of business. I need to talk to you. This is what we're going to have to do to get this shit sorted. Bring your stash of pills or whatever you've got. Bring as much money as you can. Maybe. Who knows. But this is the meeting. This is why they were there. Billy Blundell has said... Go to the farm. There's a farm track down there. Get to the farm. We'll have a meeting. So Tony, Pat and Craig arrive. They've got a bag full of something in the boot. Tony Tucker doesn't want to meet him. Tony Tucker is one of those people who's like, fuck this. I can't be bought. This is bullshit. I can't be asked. So he may have gone for a walk or gone for a piss. Billy turns up with somebody else. Opens the back door door and start and just literally sits in the back there may be a deal that goes down here or the idea of a deal he sits in the back and just says look uh yeah don't worry somebody's coming to pick the pills up on the money or whatever some sort of deal some sort of bribe to get them there in the first place and this is where he wants to lay it down saying look he's really you're really pissing the wrong people off all right let's get it sorted tonight okay but then he just suggests like he says uh, somebody's going to be coming to pick it up. And this is what happens. This bloke turns up on a motorbike. He's already declined that he's going to shoot him in the cobblers. He can't anyway because Tucker's not there. So Billy gets out of the car, maybe leaving the back door open or something. But they wait for this motorbike. That's what they're waiting for. They wait for a motorbike to turn up. Tucker comes back, sits back in the front seat of the Range Rover. And the motorbike turns up. The motorbike turns up. Tony Pan Craig are trusting it because it's Billy Blundell. Billy's already had his words. Stop fucking about with the wrong people because you're winding them up. Pat's already told him if it fucking happens, it happens. Fuck off, basically. Billy knows that they can't be helped. And it could be that it went, it was going to go either way. All they needed was the nod from Billy. It was either, we're not going to kill him. If we can sort it out with our mouths, then that's the way it's going to be. If we can't sort it out with our mouths, that's the only way it's going to be. So, it's a 50-50 thing. Give them the warning, if they adhere to it. And if they say that yes, alright, then we'll sort it out. We'll calm it down. We'll do this, that and the other. They won't be killed. They'll be sorted out as well. The pills will be taken, the money will be taken. Everything will be sorted. If they don't... That's it. Fucking end them. There and then. So, the motorbike turns up and Billy gives him the nod. Says, right, fucking do them. The bloke has already declined that he's going to shoot him in the balls. He's going he's gonna to blow their fucking heads off. This bloke wants to fucking shoot them. He wants to shoot them. He wants to kill them. He may have already been ripped off by Tony Pound Craig. Whatever happened, this bloke who shot them 
hated Tony Pat and Craig. May not have been a revenge thing, but this bloke didn't like them. He wanted them dead. But this is what I mean by it's going to be so difficult to get a name on this because he was a hitman. Try and find any hitman that don't want to be caught. You'd never find it. Anyway, you might think that's all a bit far-fetched, but if you have a look at this, now we've been, we've seen this photograph in another one of my videos called Were They Chased Down There? Or something like that. It was like, they were chased. Were they chased? And I picked up on this photograph here and the, and the entire impression of interest in this photograph is that one there. Now if you can see that it goes straight, there's, there's just one set. There's one adjacent to it there but that one goes up like that and so that one there can't be the left hand side of it and there isn't another one on the right hand side of it unless that there is it but that one goes off up there and, and I mean that goes up you can see like the, the level there that would mean that this vehicle actually went up on in to, over here so this is the one of interest here it goes straight up there can you see that and, and then it seems to come along there and it's the only one it's the only one out of this whole set of tire prints that seems to be on its own and that to me is a motorbike and then of course there was this one wasn't there this there seems to be the this tire track here there's there's a tire track here that goes right up the middle there you can see it or here i mean we i might be clutching at straws here but to me there's only one that is the single track the single tire mark that i'm interested in you know it says to me that there was a motorbike there now, the only people who have even suggested that there was a motorbike involved here was Billy in that interview. He arranged for somebody to come and shoot these people. He's telling us in that interview, isn't he? He's arranged for somebody to come and shoot them. This bloke has said no, he's not going to do that. Could that mean that he's said no, he's not going to shoot him in the balls, he's going to kill them? He's going to shoot him, he's going to kill him. End of story. He's declined the offer to shoot him in the balls. This bloke said no, he's going to kill him anyway. So now, they, Billy said let's, he invited them to a farm. This that you're looking at here is on a farm. This is the farm trap. Tony Pat and Craig have turned up. Billy and Eddie probably turn up, pull up behind them. And they wait for the bloke on the motorbike. Does that make sense? And then it's that, it's the bloke who he's ordered shoots them. It's just a theory. It's probably deemed as a crazy idea. Probably, you know, looking far too deep into this. But who cares about that? Um, you know, thanks very much for your time, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Um, there are plenty more ideas where this came from. So I'm going to be going through them in this round two. I appreciate your time. I'll see you then. Thanks very much for joining. Take care of yourselves, guys.